it's good for your soul Do that If you're on the right road Don't turn back Hi everyone, I'm Gina Jeffries and welcome to my podcast, Good For Your Soul. Thank you for watching and listening. The whole idea behind this podcast is so that I can talk to people from all walks of life, ask them about what makes them happy, what's good for their soul, and hopefully get you thinking about what makes you happy and what's good for your soul. Anyone tell you you can't do that? My guest today is Jem RPM. Jem, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'm lucky enough to have known you since you were a little girl because I'm married to your beautiful dad, Rob McCormack. <laughs> but um, I know you've got a, a lovely fan base growing and, and I'm sure everybody who knows me or who doesn't know me would probably love to know what you're up to. So I was going to tell everybody a few things, recent things that have happened for you. Uh, you've recently been named as one of the top female producers in the world to watch. Oh, by Showbiz Magazine. Yeah, that's crazy. incredible. And you've just received a nomination for Independent Producer and Album of the Year for your stunning new album, The 2070s, at the American IMAs. Yes, that's so exciting. <laughs> so exciting. And your album, The 2070s, went to number two on the Australian yeah. iTunes chart. And you've surpassed a million streams. You've achieved all this doing your own marketing, which is incredible. Thank you. And you've recently been invited into the Recording Academy as a voting member in the Producers and Engineers Wing at the Grammys. I oh, know, that's mind-blowing. Now I can vote for all of our projects. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's absolutely amazing. I'm so proud of you. And, and I know that um, lots of people may not even know of our connection, and that's why I'm so excited to have you on this and so everybody can get to know you and, and get to hear and see all the beautiful things you're doing with your life. Aww, you got I really to, appreciate that. Um, I so love sweet. having you so much. You, look, you got to collaborate with lots of fabulous singers from all over the, all over the world, really, mm -hmm. and um, also with lots of producers, including my husband, your dad. Yes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited about that. It was just such a joy to watch you guys be together and yeah. to share, now to see you share this passion. Oh, it's one of my favourite things, to be able to work with family. It's pretty nice. It's incredible, isn't yeah. it? I know, I feel really blessed too. So, so can you tell us, because when I, when I talk to my mum, for instance, yeah. and tell her what you do, she, she can't wrap her head around, she goes, oh, so does Jim go to discos with flashing lights and stuff? And she <laughs> I do <doesn't>, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. but she doesn't understand what it is you do. So can yeah. you explain to us what it is you do? Sure. I'm a DJ and a producer I work with vocalists and artists all over the world and I'm just creating my own content, which I love. And sometimes I do that with you guys and sometimes I do that with other people overseas, but just creative content and that takes all shapes and forms. It's awesome. Can you tell Thank us you. about your new album and what, yeah. what that's about? Uh, the 2070s was born out of the music that you and Dad listened to. And I just love it. It's so exciting because I feel like I've had all these songs from my childhood and I've always wanted to reimagine them with the kind of songs that I like now. So modern electronica and it's through that lens. So all of our favourite music just made a little more new and a little more modern. It's seriously one of my favourite albums Thank of you. all time and I've obviously heard a lot of albums get made in Australia. Because oh, that of, makes me feel so nice. It's, it's something that I want to play at home. How can people find it? Like, how do they buy and hear your music? So it's the 2070s, all one word. So yeah. the, and then 2070 numerals. It's on Spotify, Apple, anywhere they look, it'll be there. I so recommend that they listen to it. They're going to Thank absolutely you. love it. It's just one of those albums that's timeless. And I'm excited for what's next from Me you. Too. I'm so excited. Thank you. What's it like being a female producer in a male-dominated industry? So far, it's been really male-dominated. What's that like? Yeah, it is really male-dominated. And I'm seeing the shift. I think I'm really fortunate to be here at this moment in time where people are recognising that there are women in technical roles yeah. as well. Yeah. And I feel like they're starting to be celebrated, which is really, really beautiful. It's good. I think I've had a lot of support from males and from females alike, and I don't see any difference. You no. know, I think being female or male, I can't wait till it's just... Oh, you're a producer, yeah. not you're a female producer. I know, I love that, I love that. You know, when we just recorded my brand new album and you were there with us in Nashville and I, love and that I so loved much. that we had two female engineers. And for me as and a they singer... they were brilliant. They were brilliant. You know, put them against anybody oh, and they would just shine. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and for me as a singer and a, and a fragile singer, you know, I'd go into the booth to sing and knowing that, that it was them 
pressing, you know, talking to me in my headphones. Yeah. And just that gentle heart Does is that really make a nice. Difference for you? Totally, you? it's like a beautiful yeah, bedside wow. manner. So yeah. I think I think there's I, I'm really excited about the change in the music industry. So excited that you're in it. Oh, me too. Do you know, Gem? There was always something really special about you, even as a little oh. girl. You seem destined to be something big just because of your beautiful heart. I remember noticing that when you were oh, when you were tiny. Teary. <laughs> And um, I'm not surprised that some success is coming your way because you're Thank just one of those beautiful people. For those of you who are listening and can't see Jem, she's absolutely stunning and even more beautiful on the inside. Thank you. And I would love to ask you a bunch of questions so we can find out what's good for your soul. Oh, I love this already. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what used to make you happy as a child? Imagination. I think I would always be lost in other worlds, whether it was reading books. I had this series that I loved. It was called Animorphs, and it was about these children that would morph into animals. Mm -hmm. And I used to sit around and just pretend that I was about to morph into a firefly at any given moment. And I think that imagination made me really happy and that creativity is carried through. I love it. As well. I remember it's funny now because we're still friends, but this little boy came over to visit and he said, you have the smallest house of anyone I know. <laughs> and I remember that felt so strange because I thought it was Tinkerbell's lab. I'm like, what do you mean? Aww. So I think imagination made me really happy. And that's interesting now. That's what you're doing with your life. And when yeah. I first came up with all of these questions, I thought to myself too, what did I love doing as a child? And I loved to sing. Yeah. And I asked your dad, what did he like to do as a child? And he loved to play guitar. And I think that yeah. uh, the lucky people kind of recognise what it was that we were probably destined to do. And sometimes society conditions us to tell us that we can't do that. And I love that you are and that I am and that your dad is and it's, it's awesome. It's a great question for people to think about. Yeah, it really is. Did you know from an early age that this was what you would do or did, did this kind of, was this an evolution of you? Yeah, it's an evolution. And it's funny because I have these people from school who have recently been reaching out saying, we always knew that you were going to be in music. This is so great. And I think, did you? Yeah, no one said anything back then. Yeah, no, they don't. And I didn't know. I think it's, in hindsight, it's obvious. Mm. I went to a performing arts school, yeah. played bass in a band. I loved writing and I loved being here in the yeah. studio with you guys. And yeah. I soaked all that up. Yeah. But it wasn't obvious. I thought I was going to be a writer. Yeah. And that's what I do a little bit of, yeah. but it's definitely progressed and evolved. And do you know what I love about that? It's so inspiring for young people because some young people know exactly what they're going to do. And mm. I was lucky enough to know from a really young age. Um, but most people don't know. And it's really the process of elimination and you try stuff and you find... Just get out there and try yeah. things. Yeah, and that's, that's okay. The that's, that's the thing to know for yeah. young people out there going, I have yeah. no idea what I want to do with my life. Just go out there and try something. And if that's not right, you can try something else and, and find, like you have, yeah. uh, what, what you're destined to do. But sometimes it can take a while. And I think I'm the unusual one because I knew from a really young age this is what yeah. I wanted to do. Your dad knew from a really young age. And your yes, little brother, true. who I wasn't going to talk about, but he's also yeah, turning he into a producer knows. and he's known from a really young age. But that's yeah. unusual. So I was really interested to ask you that question that because yeah. people probably who don't know you think you might have been... They would assume that it was always the case, I yeah. think, because of the family yeah. connection. But no, it was definitely an evolution and I feel like music is like coming home. Oh, I've I come back that. to it. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay, what are the top five things you cherish in your life? Oh, I have so many. And if I say the number one thing, it's going to sound so time with family. It yes. sounds so funny yeah. saying that to you. And it's like, yes, Jem, sure. <laughs> but I really do. Time with family and whether that's here or I love going back to Wagga and playing with my godson on the grass, mm. time with my grandparents. It's For me, the biggest one is quality time with loved yeah. ones. Yeah. And because I live in another country, I don't always get that. Yeah. So I just cherish it so much when I'm here. That's one. Yeah, that's the main one. <laughs> Making music. Oh, Two. Love that. Oh, I don't. I, I can answer three for you. One. Oh, yeah, go. Good chocolate. red wine. <laughs> I chocolate. Knew, I knew that's where you were <laughs> Yes, they're definitely ones. And I think to humour. I love watching funny things. Yeah. It just like, brings so much light. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Awesome. We, oh, yeah, now tell me how you found your passion and, and do you have any training in this field? And we talked about this a little bit earlier, mm. but um, I know a lot of jobs these days, uh, you know, when you were in school, you couldn't train to do what you're doing now. And, and I think some jobs of the future, there's no university yeah. degree for that yet. Um, yeah, it, that. yeah, did you did you have any training to know, particularly, I guess, for you with your 
online media marketing, which mm-hmm. you're, you're obviously uh, you figured that out, I think, for yourself, and you're amazing at it. But Thank did you, you train in that or? Not really. I think when, in reflection, life has been pretty good training. Yeah. I did go to a performing school and I did study creative writing and communication. So I had those skills. And just being in the studio, getting a sense of, oh, I need to learn this software. Mm. Or I want to be a DJ. Okay, well, I need to go and practice and practice. And that's something that I would see Dad doing on his guitar. And I think you learn being surrounded by that. You've been soaking it in. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Just really taking on that. And I'm a real learner to ask yeah. a lot of questions. So yeah. if I saw anyone doing it well, I'd be like, excuse me, how yeah. are you doing that? Yeah. What, what can you teach me? And I've watched you two practice and practice and practice and practice. And, and nobody gets good without that practice and without that, yeah. like you say, being a sponge and taking in as much as you can. And oh, I'm so curious. It's, I'm always asking everybody and I feel... Fortunate if I'm in studios, I'm around people. I'm so inspired by. I'm yeah. like, how did you do that? What's yeah. that? What's that software? What is this button? I love do? it. I probably drive them nuts. But. but don't you find the more talented people are, the nicer they are, and they're actually really willing Definitely. to share and go. Of course, I'll show you how to do that. I love. We're hanging around some really nice people right now, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> everyone's nice they're so kind and yeah. but even in a really high level I remember mm. when I met Selena Gomez and she blew me away as one of the sweetest human beings oh, really? and I thought how nice that someone at that level is just really interested and yeah. really curious and really yeah. kind yeah and that's how people have success isn't it because you know people so. like being around people who are nice yeah well, it, it attracts them totally to other nice people and then you can collaborate yeah. and do cool things together yeah I love that yeah so we all learn from our mistakes, yet we're always so afraid to make one. Where was this true for you? Oh, it's true everywhere, all the time. I think the big one, though, is sharing creative work. I get really nervous about, did I make a mistake production-wise? Mm-hmm. Is this a good enough track? Mm-hmm. Is the song good? Did I use the right drum beat? And I get really caught up in that, mm-hmm. and I think you just have to release things and don't hold it too tightly yeah. and just be free and you know, make mistakes quickly. Just don't worry about it. Just put it out there and get over it and see what happens. I have this theory too with music that, you know, you can keep trying and trying and trying to make it better and better. And I remember my first producer, Gus Porter, who was from the band Sherbet, said to me, a good artist knows when to put the paintbrush down, which is a great thing. But also I I think too, as a a musician and an artist and a a music maker, a creative, Mm. um, it's a time capsule and it is where you are. And yeah, I always say to people that I mentor, you know, in 10 years' time, you might look back at this and go, how embarrassing, like a really bad haircut. Yeah. Or you might go, but that's where I was. That's yeah. what I knew and that's what I was talking about at the time or whatever. So it's good if you, I think you've just got to put it out there and go with it. Yeah, I it's agree. Awesome. Dad would say that too. I remember one of the moments where I let go of that and, and it's when Dad said, it's a record, literally. Yeah. It's a yeah, record that's of where you were. That word, that exactly. Like, oh, yeah. Exactly. I love it. Uh, what risk would you take if you knew you could not fail? Yeah, it's so tricky because I feel like I am. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing that right now. Moving overseas for me, I was a little terrified that I'd lose, you know, that closeness Mm -hmm. and the relationships that I've got with family and my partner and friends. Mm. And it was a huge risk to me thinking, oh, what if it doesn't work out? And then I've lost these relationships. But you just have to jump in. And obviously that was a completely unfounded fear. Yeah. And everything's working out. And I love too, when you did that, it showed all of us, that you need to be brave to chase mm. your dreams. Thank you. And I, I love telling your little brother that, yeah, that you need to be brave. I to. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably like, shut up. <laughs> probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is your greatest strength? Oh, I don't know. I could mention 20 of yours. <laughs> I don't know what my, I, I wonder if the thing I really aspire to is here, yeah, or not. And that's, I'd love to bring out the best in other people. Oh, I love that. That's something I'm really aspiring to, and I don't know if I've I think quite you do. You definitely yet. do that. Oh, that's and, nice. I, and you're a really great communicator. Thank and you. And people love you. If people let me, you love you. I'm doing a uh, stepmom <laughs> pep talk. I love it. <laughs> um, at what time in your recent past have you felt the most passionate and alive? Right now. Oh, wow. I love yeah. that. Yeah, right now I feel I came back to Australia and I was asking the universe for a little sign because I want to make sure that I was on the right path. Yeah. And just all these little nods of positive things. And I feel so passionate and just so ready and so focused. I love that. Yeah, right now. That's such a great answer. What do you most connect with, do you think? I think when I look at my closest people, they all have this one trait in common and it's they're all 
really brave in the pursuit of what they want, even if it's quite challenging, and yeah. they all overcome adversity. And I love that. And it's something I connect with that you might not be born great or in the right circumstance, mm. but you do everything it takes to get there. I, mm. I really connect with that. And I think prob- probably because you're doing that, you're recognising that in other people. Yeah, and I admire it and it motivates me yeah, as I well. That. I love that. You're going yeah. really well with these very difficult questions. Yay. <laughs> What one piece of advice would you offer to yourself as a child? Oh, to myself. Oh, that's good. I would say to stay in that world that I created, that yeah. one of imagination and yes. fantasy where you can be anything and you can try on different hats and see if they fit and not worry about naysayers because there are so many of, of those people. Yes. Just push them out and stay really true to yourself and just stay in that world as long as you can. I love that. That's I love that. I, I was thinking about that too today and, and I've been listening to podcasts and stuff recently and because uh, I I have always worried as a young person what people would think, you yeah. know, that, that We all do. Yeah, and, and this, um, this podcast I recently listened to said that, you know, early in your life you kind of don't care. In that in that stage where you yeah, were at, that the happy little world. Yeah, that's right. And then yeah. once you're sort of you've left school and you're on your own, you you are kind of worried about what people think, and you know every move you make, you're worried about you're self conscious and all those things. Mm-hmm. And then you know when you hit later life, you realise that no one was thinking about you. It's <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> freeing, actually. <laughs> so right now we need to know. It doesn't matter what people think because they're not. <laughs> they're thinking about their own life. Of course, as they should be. <laughs> I love. I heard that and I went, oh, I need to listen to that really badly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what are you avoiding? This is a good, I like this question. I'm avoiding getting some needles. <gasps> oh, I meant to have my blood taken recently and I'm just putting that off because I always faint. Oh. And so I just, I, the idea of it, I know no one likes it, but it's the first thing that came to mind. I'm like, I'm procrastinating so badly. <laughs> but it's something you have to go and do. Yeah, something you have. You want to be on top of your health and I'm trying to be really healthy. Yes. But like, Ooh, what, what else can I do today? Yeah. Yeah. They go so fast. I know. I'm <laughs> I, such a sook. <laughs> so am I. Take someone with you. Yeah. I'll hold to. your hand. Yeah. So and I need to be enticed with like jelly beans and That's right. lollies. <laughs> like a little kid. That's right. I was thinking, well, to my body, it's actually going on a diet. <laughs> yeah, that's up there. <laughs> I'm avoiding all healthy foods, yeah. I think. <laughs> totally. Okay, th- this is a, a great question. Um, what is the one job, cause, or activity that you could get out of bed happily for the rest of your life? And are you doing it now? Yes, I am. And I just had this wave of gratitude just then. I, I am doing it right now. How lucky. How lucky. It's the yeah. coolest thing. I'm, I'm so oh, I'm so excited for you. And you really are. You're doing such a great job of it. And Thank you. you're the lucky one because so many people are doing something that they don't want to do or they're living someone else's dream and, you know, we all get to decide what we can be and what we can do. And you can decide every day yes. as well. Just because that hasn't been your path doesn't mean that you can't change it. Yes. And I love that so much that you can I wake up too. and think, actually, I'm going to be this version of myself and I'm going to try this path. Yeah. And I hope, I love I that. hope someone hears that. And I hope it. so too. And also it's never too late to start again. Yes. And that's so true. Yeah, I love that as well. Oh, this is so fun. Aww. Here's a hard one. Yes. What are you most grateful for? Oh, that is really hard because I'm grateful for so much. I think Australia. Like being oh, born wow. in Australia, yeah. I yeah. feel really connected to that. And how, how fortunate are we? So to fortunate. being born in Australia and you get to grow up on a farm and have the experience of the beaches and just yeah. a really safe environment yeah. with supportive people. Yeah. I think Australia. That's I feel a great very answer. grateful to be Australian. And your friends back in uh, the US love it there too. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it everywhere. But just to have grown up in Australia, I feel is really fortunate. It is. Yeah, it totally is. What would you say is one thing you'd like to change in the world? Mm. That's hard. There's a lot of things worthy of change. I think though, I'm um, I really connected with children Mm. and child slavery would be something that Mm. if I could change just one thing affording everyone a a safe and Mm. healthy childhood Mm. that would that would be it I think just that ability to have an environment where you can dream and you can Mm. be imaginative and Mm. creative because you're in a safe comfortable place Mm. Mm. that's a beautiful thing that is a really lovely dream yeah do you ever get overwhelmed by your workload 
Yeah, and I get overwhelmed by the pressure I put on myself. Yeah. Because we're self-employed, we don't yeah. have a boss per se, yeah. but have this person inside of me cracking the whip. And, yeah, and that yeah. I do get overwhelmed with that. And I, it sometimes makes me anxious and it yeah. makes you compare yourself to other people, which yeah. is so unhealthy. Yeah. And so I try and meditate. Yes. I try and do a lot of reading, quiet time, and just remind myself that it's my journey and it's unfolding at the rate that it's meant to. I find that helps, but yes, I get overwhelmed all the time yeah. and just the mounting pressure of, <gasps> am I running out of time? I have yeah. that all, all the time. Yeah, I do too. I get really easily overwhelmed, and mm. but I'm learning as I get older to recognise it mm. and to stop. Like and you have signs that yeah, come up. Yeah, totally. So yeah. when it's, I can feel it coming, I often ring yeah. my best friend and go, I think I need to come over for a cry. <laughs> best friends are so good. Yeah, yeah. But I, and so I'm often like that duck, you know, above the top of the water I'm calm mm. and underneath I'm going, eh, just paddling so fast. And mm. and when that starts happening, I know I have to take time out. And to as a woman, oh, as a man too, but to not feel guilty about doing mm. nothing, you know, because uh, if I'm at home, I'm, um, if we're not recording or, you know, doing yeah. work. You I'm, have a very full life. You're really busy. It, yeah, and it's busy. And at home, you know, as, as the wife... You know, I'm, I'm washing and you know getting groceries and putting everything away and kind of running the house. Yeah. And sometimes I say to myself, it's okay if the house is a mess and mm. there's not a lot of food in the fridge today. Yeah. But they'll be okay. Yeah, and they I need will. to actually stop. And I'm going to lie down. I'm <laughs> just going to eat chocolate anyway. That's fine. <laughs> or order pizza. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I give my permission to lie down and watch the Netflix yeah. series and and just turn the world off and turn everything off. And I have to do that regularly, otherwise I get really overwhelmed and get anxiety and all those things. It's and really smart. To recognise that and to give yourself permission to sleep. Give it's yourself okay permission. To yes. Okay to go to bed early and totally. be that person. I need that sometimes. I sometimes I go to bed early while we've got pet visitors over. <laughs> yeah, you do that. <laughs> but I don't turn the lights on. I leave the lights on. <laughs> so, how do you stay motivated when it gets hard to keep following your dream? What do you do? I usually just call people that I'm really close to. My grandmother is great for this. Yeah. So I'll be like, I'm having a difficult day or this is happening. She's yeah. like, you know what? Time's of the essence. Just go for it. And yeah. I think having a team of people, if it's close friends, family, whoever it is for you, and just knowing that you can call them and get really heartfelt, solid advice mm. keeps me really motivated. And I think that's a real secret to success for mm. people who are successful is they have a team. Oh, and they, they trust them. Trust. Yeah. And yeah. it might be your mum or your gran yeah. or might your be. best friend or whoever it is, but those mm. people that you can lean on and mm. nobody can do this on their own. No one can do anything on their own and it's nice to recognise. It's a collective. Yeah. So recognise your tribe members. Yeah. Because not everyone's on your team as well and you've got to recognise those ones mm. who aren't in it. And you might discover them later in life too. You might be finding new people that you really connect with and think, oh, wow, you bring something so special and unique to me. I love that. That happens all the time. I think, wow, I'm so happy that we met or that our paths crossed in some strange way. Yeah, yeah. Good answer. Thank you. If joy became the national currency, joy, Mm -hmm. I've said that clearly for everybody listening, if Mm -hmm. joy became the national currency, Mm -hmm. what kind of work would you do that would make you wealthy Mm. enjoy (laughs) what a beautiful question i would still be within music because i just it makes me so happy to do that and i think helping artists with their creativity and really actualizing that so bringing the artist out of them i I love that process and i think i have the patience for it you really do you're very patient (laughs) human bringing that out I, i love that i love watching people you know, even with the records we just made in Nashville, watching you step back into it, that brings me so much joy. So yeah. it's definitely in music and being around people who are just coming into their full dream. I love that. I, th- yeah. I think, too, that um, there's such a great joy in helping people and um, helping people achieve their dreams. I really get a lot of joy out of watching other people succeed, like yeah, you and, and people that I've been lucky enough to mentor. And I think even on a, if you're not in the music industry like us, mm. even just being kind to someone, the joy you get from, yeah. I don't know, helping someone who dropped all their groceries or, you know, mm. you see someone at the shops who hasn't got enough money for their, you know, $5, whatever, you know, just those yeah. little tiny things we can all do as humans. Oh, definitely. probably go unnoticed, yeah. but it brings they you... They don't, though, because oh, people really don't. notice them. Yeah. But I know, moving to LA, I had a couple of people that were just endlessly kind and I can't wait to repay it. Yeah, yeah. And... I think they just did it because that's who they are. They're inherently good. And I love that. But it's almost, 
in a really beautiful way, selfish to be so beautiful because it makes you feel so good. It does make you Yeah, <laughs> I love, I love, I love it. Um, would you rather be a millionaire doing a job that you don't really like or poor doing something that you love? Oh, I think we know the answer. <laughs> I'm think poor do. doing something that I love. <laughs> Yeah. I, it's just I am only motivated by things that I love. Yeah. So getting out of bed, and you don't feel poor. You feel so that's rich right. that you get yeah. to be lucky enough to work on something that's also your passion. And having those two things align, yeah. I yeah. feel really, really good about that. Yeah, I feel like I guess that question for any musician is <laughs> it's the yeah, same thing, isn't it? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And finally, this is my last question. We've done yes. 20 very difficult questions. Oh, I've loved all of them. <laughs> Ask 20 more. <laughs> but the final question is, what do you do that's good for your soul? Oh, it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I love to put on the Lion King. Um, I just can't wait to be king song from the Lion King soundtrack. And I put on my PJs and I dance around my living room to it. And sometimes I'll FaceTime my godson in and he dances as well. Or I'll FaceTime my best friends in and we all have a Lion King dance off. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're the only person who's going to give me that answer. <laughs> I hope so. I hope there's only one. <laughs> that crazy. But I just love it. It's, it's such a high energy song and all the Disney soundtracks. I just <laughs> me too. Love it. All comes back to music. Yeah. Jem, thank you for oh, being God. on my podcast. It's been an absolute joy to have you and to thank hear you your having. insights into your world. And I hope that um, everybody out there who knows you uh, gets to know a little more about you that they may not have known. And people yeah. out there who know me and didn't realise that I have this beautiful, talented stepdaughter and that you're all grown up and you've got this wonderful career of your own, mm-hmm. I'm sure they enjoyed hearing all about you and your life. Mm-hmm. I'd love them to. Okay. Let's remind them again. They need to go and buy your music. Please, yes, please do. Please. Just do it because you're going to love it, everybody. <laughs> it's, it is amazing. It's, She's not biased at I'm, all. I'm not, even, <laughs> I'm not even biased a little bit. It really is my favourite album. Oh, so thank you. Please buy it. Tell us oh, again I'm how so to do it. I'm so grateful for you. All your support. Oh, really, well, really. Am. I love you and I'm oh. so happy to be part of your life. So yeah. tell us, they, oh, 2070s, how do, they, how do they buy your music? Spotify, Apple, the 2070s. So the and then two words. Do it. Go do it. This is Gemma RPM, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> if it's good for your soul, do that. If you're on the right road, don't turn back. Thank you so much for watching or listening all the way to the end. And if you enjoyed this, please tell your friends and share it. And contact me on social media if you can think of anyone you would like me to talk to. And don't forget, whatever's good for your soul, do that. You can.